Hello, in this video, we're going to express negative three plus three i in what's called polar form. Let me show you how to do this solution. So if you have a complex number in the form a plus b i, to write it in polar form basically means you write it like this. It's r parentheses cosine theta plus i sine theta. So in this case, r is the square root of a squared plus b squared. So these are the formulas you would want to memorize in order to write something in polar form. There are more formulas. This is kind of like a bare minimum way to do it, which is the way I prefer to do it. It's less memorization. So a here is going to be negative 3, and b is going to be 3. And so now what you do is you just take these numbers, these a, the a and the b, and you plug them into your formula for r. So this is equal to square root of, so a is negative 3, so it's negative 3 squared, plus, and then b is 3, so it's 3 squared. That's equal to the square root of, negative 3 squared is 9, and it's positive, 3 squared is 9. 9 plus 9 is 18, so we get the square root of 18. So r is the square root of 18, and it can be simplified. You want to think of the largest factor of 18 that's a perfect square. That would be 9. So this would be square root of 9 times the square root of 2, and the square root of 9 is 3, so this is 3 root 2. So r is equal to 3 square root of 2. I'm going to put that in a box because that's important. So r is called the modulus of the complex number. It's the distance between the complex number and the origin in the complex plane. Now we have to find theta uh, for our formula. So what I like to do is I like to write down our actual complex number again. So negative 3 plus 3i. And then you set it equal to r, which is 3 root 2. Right, just using the formula up here, a plus bi equals r times cosine theta plus i sine theta, parentheses, cosine theta, plus i sine theta. And again, you can memorize the formulas for sine and cosine, or even use the tangent function and draw a picture. I just personally prefer to memorize as little as possible. And then we can distribute uh, the 3 root 2. So this is negative 3 plus 3i equals, we have 3 root 2 times cosine theta plus, and then we have i, 3 root 2, sine theta. So on the left-hand side, we have a complex number, and on the right-hand side, we have a complex number. Two complex numbers are equal, if and only if. The real parts are equal, and the imaginary parts are equal. So that means that negative 3, that's the real part on the left-hand side, is equal to the real part on the right-hand side. So we have that negative 3 is equal to 3, square root of 2, cosine theta. Beautiful. And then the imaginary part is 3, and that's equal to the imaginary part on the right-hand side, which is 3 root 2 sine theta. Very nice. We could solve each of these for the trig functions. So we have cosine theta equals, so dividing by 3 root 2, we're just going to get negative 1 over root 2. And over here we get sine theta. Dividing by 3 root 2, we just get 1 over root 2. So we're looking for the angle theta, such that the cosine of theta is negative 1 over root 2, and sine of theta is 1 over root 2. So if you think about the unit circle, we know that whenever we have 1 over root 2, it's going to be some special multiple of pi over 4, one of the special angles. And on the unit circle, cosine is the x-coordinate and sine is the y-coordinate. So we're basically asking, when is x negative and y positive? Well, that's going to occur in quadrant 2. x is negative and y is positive. But what is that special angle that's a multiple of pi over 4? Well, it's this angle I've drawn in white here. And this angle here is pi over 4. And so this will be 3 pi over 4. This is going to be our angle because this is pi and it's 4 pi over 4, so it's pi over 4 less. So that's the special angle we want. So theta is 3 pi over 4, just from memory. 
Now we can write our answer down. It'll be r, which was 3 root 2, parentheses cosine theta, so cosine of 3 pi over 4, plus i sine of 3 pi over 4. This would be the polar form of our complex number. It's also called the trig form or the trigonometric form. And there's actually another way you can write it. So this is the same thing as saying 3 root 2. Cis, C-I-S, stands for cosine I sine, 3 pi over 4. Or cosine I sine of 3 pi over 4 is cosine 3 pi over 4 plus I sine 3 pi over 4. Or you can write it another way. Why not? It's 3 root 2. E to the 3 pi over 4 times i, where this e to the 3 pi over 4 times i is equal to the cosine of 3 pi over 4 plus i sine 3 pi over 4. So all of these are equivalent answers. So three different ways to answer the question. I hope this video has helped someone in the world who's trying to learn this. And, and just remember, to do these problems, um, just know what polar form is. So just know that a plus bi is equal to r times cosine theta plus i sine theta. Know the formula for r. And that's it, right? That's it. Because you find r, and then you basically plug it back into your polar form, which we did right here. And then you just solve for theta, right? By distributing the r, and then setting the real and, uh, real and imaginary parts equal to each other. And I think this is the best way to do it. You can use the tangent function, but then you have to plot the points, which um, is always good to do. But by doing this, uh, you're essentially thinking about where the point is because you're thinking about the unit circle and you're saying, oh, okay, it's over here. So yeah, many ways to do the problem. Hopefully this has been helpful to someone. Good luck.